<laughs> Famine, calamity, global economic collapse. It sounds like the trailer for a Hollywood blockbuster or the investment catalog for a Mike Maloney hedge fund. But one of the biggest proponents for such dire prognostications is the Holy Bible. According to information provided by Shabbat.org, as soon as the ancient Israelites settled into the Holy Land, they began to count and observe seven year cycles that will culminate in a sabbatical year known as a Shemitah, which literally means to release. The implications of the Shemitah are heavy and wrought with trepidation. Deuteronomy chapter 15 verses 1 and 2 reads, At the end of seven years you will make a release. And this is the manner of the release, to release the hand of every creditor from what he lent his friend. He shall not exact from his friend or his brother, because the time of the release for the Lord has arrived. Arguably, the biggest proponent of the Shemitah is Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, who has interpreted this biblical passage to mean a period when the financial markets dramatically bleed, or to be precise, release capital valuations. Mr. Kahn also points to extreme crises that seemingly proliferate during the Shemitah cycle. The 2008 global financial meltdown, the 2001 terrorist attacks, the 1994 attack on the World Trade Center, Black Monday of 1987. But how believable is this story? Rabbi Khan has extensively warned Americans about the Shemitah through Pat Robertson's 700 Club, which has about as much credibility as a human rights violations report on North Korea written by North Korea. I approached the Shemitah with a healthy dose of skepticism, but I nevertheless was intrigued, so I ran the numbers. The Shemitah cycle by itself is not really interesting without a comparative baseline. Therefore, in addition to the Shemitah cycle, I took the average market performance of the S&P 500 going back to 1959 for every 7 year cycle outside of the Shemitah. For the first cycle in front of the Shemitah, the S&P returned an average 3.47%. In the second cycle, it returned a whopping 20.47%. In the third cycle, it returned nearly 6%, and generally speaking, each cycle ahead of the Shemitah produces increasingly positive returns. However, on the Shemitah cycle itself, it produces an average loss of negative 4%. This is completely aberrant from any other market cycle and certainly lends credence to Rabbi Khan's assertions. But does it mean that the Shemitah cycle is real? Mathematically speaking, the evidence is not conclusive. Between 1959 to 1980, the Shemitah was essentially a 50-50 split. Only from 1987 to 2008 did the Shemitah trend in accordance to biblical context. But with two divergent patterns, we can only guess as to what 2015 will bring. According to the quantifiable evidence at hand, the Shemitah is a faith-based barometer. Those that believe it will believe it, and those that don't will not. Thanks for watching. Stop taking blind swings at the market and instead receive the best stock ideas with the highest probability of success. At Bullish Money, we want to put more cash in your stash using scientific algorithms. No opinions, no interpretations, no nonsense. Just straight facts. To get started today, subscribe to the Bullish Money YouTube channel and get actionable stock ideas right to your inbox.